If you want to support me on Patreon, click the element on the end screen. Hey guys, Tyler here. One of my favorite things to do on this channel besides talk about the history of fictional sci-fi universes is to talk about the biology of fictional alien species. With the release of the remastered edition of the Mass Effect trilogy, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, I thought it would be a fantastic opportunity to delve into that universe's myriad of extraterrestrial cultures. Today we'll be focusing on the Asari. The Asari are a monogender, blue-skinned humanoid species, native to the planet Thessia. They are among the most influential and respected species in the galaxy, having achieved spaceflight long before any of the other extant species in the Milky Way. They were the first modern race to find the Citadel. They are founding members of the Citadel Council and are at the forefront of its politics, economy, and military. Their millennium-long lifespans and unique reproductive abilities contribute heavily to their ubiquity in these fields and the mark they continue to leave on galactic history. Let's explore how their physiology influences their position on the interstellar stage and impacts the perpetuation of their species. Asari resemble humans in terms of their body plan featuring bilateral symmetry and five digits on each of their four limbs. They also have mammalian breasts, a navel, and semi-flexible cartilage-based scalp crests in place of hair on their heads. But one of the Asari's most distinctive features is their blue skin, which is likely a reference to the green-skinned Orions from Star Trek. While it's somewhat difficult to extrapolate what extraterrestrials will really look like in different environments, science can give us some indicators as to what's likely. The pigmentation of life forms, particularly vegetation, can be determined with some confidence by the type of light emitted by different types of stars. Thessia's sun, Parnitha, is a G-type yellow-orange star, not unlike our own, and vegetation on Thessia appears green in color. But as far as the Asari's skin pigmentation goes, ranging from indigo to teal, there are a few possibilities. Normally, one might expect a blue-skinned alien species to evolve either around a blue star or a red dwarf. In either case, this would be because they are absorbing all the colors of the visible spectrum, except high-energy blue light, which in high concentrations can be toxic. As for a yellow-orange star, such a star that is slightly cooler than Sol would emit more red light, which blue pigments absorb. Another reason the Asari are blue is likely tied to the color of their blood, which is purple. This could be the result of an oxygen-binding protein called hemerythrin, which is one-fourth as efficient at oxygen transport as hemoglobin, and like hemoglobin, is iron-based. Hemerythrin, which is colorless until oxygenated, can be found in various sea worms such as peanut worms, brachiopods, and penis worms. Alternatively, Asari blood could use hemocyanin, which is copper-based and free-floating. It is also colorless until oxygenated, and results in either a violet or, more commonly, blue hue. This protein can be found in horseshoe crabs, spiders, crustaceans, and some types of mollusk. Besides the Asari's blue skin, one of their more notorious and alluring features is their concept of gender and their sexual orientation. While most Asari are referred to with either female or gender-neutral pronouns and hold traditionally feminine titles such as matriarch, the truth is Asari are neither male nor female. While they appear similarly to human women in terms of their complexion and body shape, at least as far as the player is aware, their reproductive practices run contrary to normal human expectations. Asari are able to mate with any gender of any species in a process that involves the melding of the two mates' nervous systems via skin-to-skin -skin contact into what is effectively a temporary singular organism. The Asari provides two copies of her genes, one of which remains unaltered, but the other of which is mutated based on the most desirable traits from the other partner. The Asari and her partner share thoughts, memories, and feelings during the process and the Asari is able to probe her mate's genetic ancestry to find the genes she wants to pass on to her offspring. The offspring is always Asari, regardless of the species of the father, quote-unquote. Offspring of Asari who reproduce within their own species are referred to by the pejorative purebloods. They are more susceptible to a defect called Ardat Yakshi, which can overwhelm and destroy their partner's nervous systems during a melding. Because Asari culture promotes the obtainment of insight from cross-species reproduction, intraspecies conception is frowned upon as it's considered a waste of Asari potential. 
It's this aim to spread their influence, not just through cultural domination, but also by leaving their biological footprint that has solidified their position as one of the Milky Way's most powerful races. The Asari reproduction process is sometimes referred to as a form of parthenogenesis, which is an asexual form of reproduction that occurs in some plants and animals on Earth. Parthenogenesis occurs when an embryo is created without fertilization, often from an unfertilized egg. Technically, the Asari are not asexual as they do need a partner to reproduce, but it's definitely a similar principle. The father that an Asari mates with, which again could be of any gender, does not in fact contribute half the genetic material to the offspring. So it's kind of asexual, kind of not. It's alien. This does make sense from an evolutionary standpoint though, as purely asexual reproduction would be less efficient when it comes to introducing beneficial genetic mutations to a population in order to help it survive. The Asari's reproductive behaviors and their attractive appearance have led to a common misconception that they are promiscuous. This is largely the result of misinformation, as when an Asari mates with a partner outside her species, as is encouraged, inevitably she must accept that she will most likely outlive her partner. This leads Asari to cherish every moment they have with their partners, no matter how small or insignificant each moment might seem. So do you want to get one of the fish, or maybe a model ship? Fish have nothing to do with the Citadel. Besides, it'll be dead in a couple of years. The important thing is to embrace the time that you have to spend with a fish. Oh, for... is this the lifespan talk? I'm not having the lifespan talk. In any event, Asari are keenly aware of their reputation as being highly attractive, and often use this to their advantage to elicit sexual pleasure and, in the long term, emotional investment from members of other species. Besides their reproduction, Asari biology is also enhanced by their natural biotic abilities, as evidenced in Mass Effect's gameplay. Their biotic powers, which can be honed through training, are largely the result of an abundance of element zero on their home planet. Early in their history, the Asari were also manipulated by the Protheans, whose intervention in the Asari genetic code accelerated Asari evolution and societal development. The Protheans also created the guise of Athame, a benevolent goddess who forms the basis of the Asari's monotheistic religion. The Asari's biotic nature also lends itself to a wider zone of personal space, which may have contributed to their formation of disconnected city-states for most of their history, until their information age brought on globalization. Then there's the Asari lifespan. Asari have three distinct biological stages marked by physiological and biochemical changes. The maiden stage, which begins at puberty and is marked by a drive to explore and experience things. The matron stage, which begins around age 350 and is marked by a desire to settle in one place and raise children. And the matriarch stage, which begins around age 700 and commonly sees Asari more active in their community as sages and counselors. For example, matriarchs on the Citadel Council and within their home government are often deferred to in decision making. Finally, there is one other elusive aspect of Asari biology that has major implications. In a conversation from Mass Effect 2 between three NPCs, a human, a Turian, and a Salarian, each comes to the realization that the Asari appear differently to different species, tailoring their appearance to what each species finds attractive. This has led to theories among players that the Asari might qualify as parasites using purely neurochemical processes to influence the way they are perceived by outsiders. Thus, the Asari theoretically might not be humanoid at all, and their true appearance could be literally anything. I can understand why I might find Asari attractive, but how can they be attractive to humans too? They look just like Salarians. What? They look exactly like us. I'm, I, I'm not seeing the Salarian thing at all, at all. You're both wrong. Asari look just like Blue Turians. Look at the head fringe. Wait, you don't think they're like mind controlling us to see them as attractive, do you? This theory is not airtight, however. It's rather speculative, an extrapolation from some NPC dialogue that, while still canon in its own way, could have alternative explanations. What do I think? Well, it's an intriguing idea. Certainly, if this conversation is to be taken seriously, then if we take its implications to their logical extreme, the results are quite unsettling. The necessity to maintain a particular facade for any and all interactions with other species would require a lot of energy on the part of the Asari. Possible with their biotic aptitude, of course, but it would seem to require a substantial effort nonetheless. 
The statue of Athame on Thessia bears similar appearance to the Asari as humans would know them. So, does their deception go so far as to include masking inanimate objects using psychic powers? I tend to think an example such as this might disprove that the Asari are constantly faking their appearance, or it might not. Certainly, the use of pheromones to produce such an effect would have been documented by galactic science, and if it were a state secret among the Asari, it would require, like I said, a lot of effort to maintain, though we know they have state secrets, such as their true history with the Protheans. What I think is another likely explanation is that the Asari's true appearance is much like what we see in the games, and that they happen to resemble humans. But when attracting members of other species besides humans, they could use pheromones or neurochemical signals to alter their appearance further. Is this explanation human-centric? Quite a bit, and it's not the most satisfying answer. It's one of those things that serves as a humorous in-joke that we may never know for sure. Whatever the case, the Asari are definitely one of the most interesting races for Mass Effect from a purely biological standpoint. Their unique physiology and unique history distinguish them from other alien races, not just in the games, but in most science fiction, with their unorthodox application of genetic transformation, a source of fascination that makes for an interesting analysis using both real-world and fictitious scientific concepts. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on the information presented in this video down below in the comments. Um, and you can also let me know what alien species you like me to feature in a future episode of this series, Alien Biology, if it becomes a series. If you enjoy this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and don't forget to share it. Uh, it really helps me out. Uh, if you want to become a patron or a YouTube member, links to those as well as my merch store and social media are in the description below. And finally, don't forget to hit that subscribe button most people who watch these videos are not subscribed, so if you do, you uh, won't miss future updates, and be sure to click the bell icon to receive all notifications. Um, yeah, that's about it. So, um, yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.